happy I am to see these oriental poppies coming up because last year they just sort of disappeared and I didn't know they were dead or well, what but here they are How amazing this is called Helen Elizabeth Rose has really been through a lot of trauma this is a Julia Child Rose that I planted last year from a, from a baby pot and I had it in the ground and the puppy um, Godfrey came along and stole it out of the ground. I was pretty angry with him, but I didn't know what he did with it. And I just figured he took that rose out and chewed it up, and who knew where it was. And then two weeks later, I saw him chewing on something again. It was a rose. I thought he'd pulled up another rose. And it was this one. And believe it or not, it was still alive. It's still got signs of life in it. So I put it in a pot safely here on the table and we're going to see how much we can get this little rose to revive after all that trauma that it went through with Godfrey. Yes, because this is kind of funny. Um, you may remember when I was going through my bulbs and some of them were mushy and soft and I said, ah, oh, they're rotten. Well, I threw them over my shoulder and I just tossed them into this garden just as fertilizer basically and lo and behold, look at that. They're coming up. They're actually growing. This was what I thought was a rotten bulb. And there's another one over here, which I thought was a rotten bulb. And it's definitely going to produce a tulip. There's another one. So there's about five of them in here that all have sprouts, blades coming out. Look, here's more. Look at that. So don't throw away your bulbs, even when they look mushy and rotten. You never know what might come out of them. Just look at that. Today I'm continuing where I left off, where I was pulling the quack grass, alias the monster, out of this long strip. And my attempt is to turn this slope, which is a pretty steep slope, into a decent vegetable garden. I chose this spot, although I have a lot of flat land around here, almost so many swampy areas on the flatlands and sandy, but this area here is fairly useless. Lots of hills around here, but I'd love to turn this slope into a garden, a vegetable garden, simply because the sun, it's a south-facing area. It gets six to eight hours a day of sunshine. This little section here, eight hours of sun on the other side, about six as the shade begins to fall. But this could give me a good size garden, but it's a real challenge because here I am on this steep slope and I'm going to have to work things out so that I can get a lot of raised beds here. So I'm taking a combination of cedar logs, which we have, because they're long-lasting cedar logs. We've had these in various uses around here, and metal raised beds. Now, I know a lot of people are using these metal raised beds these days, and there must be a good reason for it. But I've been using galvanized tubs for quite some time the kind that you get at the feed store, which are troughs. But now they're making them without bottoms, like this. So you can use them specifically in your garden. So I'm giving a couple of them a try. I really like this one, and really all this is, is like roof, roof siding, metal siding for a roof. Same thing we have on our barn, reinforced with, with steel on the top and bottom. It was so easy to put together. It's a good size. It's only 12 inches high, but tall enough for me to get a decent raised bed up off the ground and away from the quack grass. Using these old galvanized horse troughs. This one was I used for my sheep, actually, for many years as raised beds. I make great raised beds. The problem is you've got to drill a hole in the bottom, and it, feels, it seems like such a waste, such a waste to do that to a trough. But this one does have holes on the bottom. But what I like about them is they start out really shiny and then they get this pewter-like finish. So I did purchase some of these other ones that you put together in pieces. This one's huge. What I don't like is that it's so shiny, but it is enormous. It's just huge. But I want to do my raised beds with these. So I'm thinking that with time, these two will change colors, I hope. If they don't, and they stay this shiny, shiny, new-looking, modern stuff, which I don't like, you can take Lysol toilet bowl cleaner and brush it on the finish here. Leave it on for about 30 minutes, wipe it off, and you have that nice 
old zinc and pewter look. So I'll give it a chance to age before I do anything like that. Now excuse this bed. This is part of the bed on the slope that I am redoing because my slope garden just didn't work out the other uh, about two years ago I started this slope garden and it just was an utter flop. So what did do well were the roses. So here are the roses sitting in some old galvanized tubs. These tubs have no bottoms. So they totally rotted out. But these are David Austin roses I planted last year. I've already given them a prune, and I think they're going to be great. This is Bathsheba. And Bathsheba the second. So this is what I'm working on today, and this is going to be um, cedar and stone steps. When I made stone, I mean rock. <laughs> cedar and gravel steps. So this is what I'm doing today with my pick. It's been raining for three days, so the soil is pretty easy. I have somewhere to transplant this grass where we've got some pretty bare patches along the side of the house. Brought in loads and loads of gravel. I'm going to put all the blueberry in the pots because they did terribly in the ground. And I'm building a stairway here. And I'm going to take this stairway all the way up to the pump house. Now we don't use well water anymore, but this pump house still, of course, fills up and then excess water flows down a little gully alongside. But that is such a cute little pump house. I want to turn it into something. I want to make some of the garden beds out of the cedar logs, as I said. Now this is pretty huge and you need to make it so that you can reach over into the bed. To, to pick your produce, etc. But since this is so wide, I will probably do a bunch of flowers smack in the middle, just flowers, and then surrounding it with vegetables. Now I'm using a hogel culture here where you just layer it with sticks and branches and logs and grass, old grass clippings and whatever else you can find, leaves, that sort of thing. And then you build up upon, upon that a nice layer of planted really deep sorry. bed, which is 24 inches tall. I can get a lot of logs, sticks, leaves, all sorts of things. I'll go up to about 12 inches before I start adding some manure from the barn. But on these smaller ones, I'm just able to use all this debris from the yard, the bark, the sticks, and cardboard on the bottom. I still have to remove all this grass. These have been set up against my cattle panel. And in front of that cattle panel is a flower garden. Doesn't look like one now, but it is. And in front of that, I'll cross the walkway is the potager, which is where the vegetables have always grown in the past. I just want to switch gears and use these red be raised beds my now. Quandary, my one quandary here is that the gardening style around here, this is hop along hollow scaping and is what I call it. And it's pretty rustic and I like the old fashioned look and I like the um, nostalgia of old world gardens, which is fine with the logs. That works out great. But these raised beds are a little bit contemporary and I've got to do something to make them blend in or at least coincide with the atmosphere that I'm trying to create here. So that's going to be a little bit of a challenge. Now, as far as the galvanized beds like this, they always age and they turn kind of a really nice old pewter color. So those I'm not too concerned about. But these, well, what I do like about them is they're the same color as our house. So I think that's perfect. I was lucky to find them in this shade of green. And actually from afar, they just look like raised wooden beds that have been painted green. So I guess it won't be too much of a problem. Now you may notice that I always have a lot of big pots and we are fortunate in that we live about 45 minutes from a place that imports things from all over the world and these all come from Mexico. So these great clay pots, I don't pay much for them. About These were $24 for these great clay pots. Mm, that one's having a trouble with drainage. I'll have to set it on some rocks or drill some more drainage holes in it because I'm putting blueberry bushes 
in these big pots. Now I have made a rough plan of what I want to do here, but things have already changed since I wrote this, drew, drew this out. This ray, raised bed made with stumps, I'm going to mirror image it on this side. I'm going to make two obelisks, one for peas, one for beans, and up here right off the front of the pump house, I'm going to build a short grape arbor. It's pretty windy out here today, so I hope that you can hear me. Pretty breezy, but what a wonderful warm day. And if it weren't for that breeze, I don't think I could be out here. So I am using these stumps that James cut down uh, a tree last year, a couple trees actually, and just had to cut it into bits and stacked it. And I didn't know what we were gonna do with it, but I think it's gonna be perfect for this part of the slope. This bed will not be evened out, but I'll do my best <laughs> to see what I can plant in this section. I think on this section I will cover the grass with cardboard and do a no-dig bed here. We need to portray not only the beautiful parts of our property, but the bad stuff too. And this is this is the pump house. I love this little pump house. We don't use it anymore because we have actually have city water that was brought in. Thank goodness, because this is a sulfur well. Ugh horrible but when it overflows it does pour down this ugly gully ugly ugly gully but I think I can even improve the look of this gully so that's another thing to do and consider the Sun I am watching all day long to see where the Sun goes where does it land where, how long does it stay in one area here on the side of the pump house there's a wonderful vine that grows here a trumpet vine which is just glorious in the summer just glorious but behind it, it has some nice sun, and I thought a raised, a small raised bed right here where I could plant the pumpkins. And then pumpkins can be trained to travel down this ugly hill. We're getting there. Well, the rain is forcing me to take a day off from this job, which is probably a good thing. But I'm about a quarter of the way to where I want to be. This is definitely duck and geese weather today. It's pretty warm. Look at all the water. They love that. It's not going to do me any good as far as working outside, but it's certainly going to do a lot of good for everything that's underground and waiting to sprout up in the garden. But I'm going to have to put a pause on my slope for the day, and probably for quite a few days. It's just too muddy and mucky out there. But I've gotten pretty far, and I guess we'll be seeing you next time here in Hopalong Hollow. This is Jerry on a wet and rainy day.